and welcome to the hustings for the SU's Vice President for Charities and Community for 2021. My name is Madeline Ross. I'm a reporter for the Oxford Student. I play a lot of sport and I'm a, a second year PPEist at Balliol College. Um, tonight is unfortunately online as we are in the continuing COVID pandemic, but we have five wonderful candidates here for you to hear more about and to explain their manifesto policies and what they'd like to achieve in the year that they would be vice presidents for charity and charities and community. This is a sabbatical position, so it is paid and the term length is a year. OK, so we will hear from the candidates one by one in two minute speeches. I will then move on to questions that have been sent in by students and also some targeted questions that I have formulated based on their manifestos. And I think without further ado, we will move on to the first speech from a candidate, which is from Alina. Hi, I'm Alina, uh, she, her pronouns, a third year historian at CAPS. I'm running for VP Charities and Community because I'm really excited by the opportunity to make a difference at Oxford. Since my time here, I've been involved with RAG and my experience with charities and fundraising has made me want to pursue it as a career. Although I've really enjoyed my time here so far, I've definitely recognised issues that I think need to be addressed at university level. I'd love the chance to be more involved to make these changes. My four policies are increasing support for students applying for accommodation for over the back due to difficult home circumstances, increasing awareness and accessibility for sustainability in colleges, creating a central university homelessness action crisis plan and creating close relationships with local businesses and local sustainable businesses. I think I'd be a really good VPCC because my passion for change combined with my organisation and creativity means that I'm determined to bring my policies to life and to ensure that they happen and make a real difference. I'm very experienced working with charities because I've been working with RAG for nearly three years now and I, I used to be VP Communications, a role that I just loved. Um, I also have experience in representing the student body as I was JCR Secretary at St Catherine's College and I was involved in the like coming up with the project of Walk In My Shoes, which is an Oxford um, ethnic minority student video project. So I've, it was one of the most rewarding things I've done because it was it provided a new platform to like give a community um, a voice. And I think that's what I'd be really excited to do in this role. By taking on the role of VPCC, it gave me an opportunity to, to make these institutional uh, changes about causes that are close to my heart. So for me, going from feeling like an absolute imposter when I first arrived in Oxford to running for an SU election is such a big deal. And so it'd be it really mean a lot to me to have everyone support. Also, please remember to buy a, a blind date ticket for rag blind dates to support our full charity. Perfect. Thank you, Alina. Um, moving on quickly now to Freya, our second candidate of the evening. Hi, am I unmuted? Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, I do. Um, hi, I'm Freya, she, her pronouns, uh, third year at Pembroke. Um, and over the course of my degree, I've really had my eyes open to so many amazing campaigns that students have led at this university. From standing out in the rain at St John's to rallying in front of the Clarendon building, I've seen time and time again the passion that Oxford students have for improving this university. And there are so many diverse causes within the student body. But in my manifesto, I've identified that these passions can be grouped under one word, justice. Justice in our institutions, justice in our communities and justice in our curricula. And that's the message I want to take forward if I'm elected. And this pandemic has highlighted the need for us to extend our support to local communities. The SU already do fantastic work with local mutual aid groups, but I know how daunting it can be as a student to breach that kind of town gown divide. So I wanna make charitable work in the local community more accessible to students, as well as campaigning for colleges to finally instate the Oxford living wage as a recognition of the contribution the key workers have always had at the university. And my time as JCR environment representative has taught me that it's not enough to be a passionate individual and you have to make institutional change, change that continues to have effects long after you've left. That's why I want to make colleges commit to divesting from fossil fuels finally, and also for them to instate the Oxford living wage, and for faculties to finally recognise that the world is changing around them, and that colonialism and climate change are topics that they can no longer afford to ignore. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you very much, Freya. OK, moving on to um, Glyn Owen, if you'd like to unmute and tell us about yourself. 
Hi, I'm Glyn, I use he, him pronouns, and I'm a third year PP at UNIV. Uh, cutting straight to the chase, my campaign is focused on uplifting student voices and making sure that they get direct representation with the university. So I'm doing this by focusing on three different areas. First of all, harnessing student voices, which means expanding on the REPCOR model that the SU already uses to directly inform the SU's approaches towards different issues. This has been done very well with sustainability this year already, and I think it would work very well with other areas, particularly access. Um, I also think that we could reach out to societies for input because they create strong, act um, strong, large, active communities of students which currently remain untapped. Um, my next point is that I'd like to strengthen ties with clubs and societies. Uh, because they aren't attached to colleges and because they don't get a lot of support from the club's office, um, I think the SU needs to be the place that gives them resources, especially when they run into difficulties with the club's office or if they have problems that arise within their clubs or committees that um, they need professional help for. Um, and also on this point, the Sports Federation. Um, the Sports Fed organised sports at Oxford University, but they've had very little connection with the SU until this year. I want to make a commitment to increasing and um, developing this relationship with the, with the Sports Federation so that we make sure that sports clubs have adequate access to sports facilities moving into next year as they return to in-person formats. Um, the final point that I'm focusing on my manifesto is recovering communities post-COVID. I think we need to be sensitive to the fact that we're going to be dealing with COVID for a while yet, and that a lot of the cohort next year won't have seen Oxford pre-COVID. And if they have, then they won't have seen it very much. So I think the SU needs to be the place where students can have the resources to know how they can run their student societies better next year. So that means a database of room booking and a database of what the COVID policies are at different colleges so that they know how to run themselves. Um, so in conclusion, my three main points are to reach out to more students and to inform the SU's work, to strengthen ties with clubs and societies to make sure they get fair representation in the university and to support them. And finally, recovering communities post-COVID, ensuring that um, societies and clubs have the resources they, are, they, um, they need to get us back into in-person life smoothly. Thank you. Perfect. You had two seconds left, so very well timed. Um, moving on to Mia. Um, hi, I'm Mia, she, her, a finalist at Somerville. I believe that the grassroots work students do to look after our community and our planet improves the world we live in and guarantees a better future. That's why it's really important our efforts resume in full force after the pandemic. Although we've all adapted, working with RAG last year showed me how difficult it can be to engage students during this time. So as soon as it's safe, I'll push for a strong return to in-person volunteering, offering taster sessions to, the, to give those people who have missed out, especially first years, a chance to get stuck into this important side of student life. I hope that this will bring together the student body and by directing our efforts into local causes, repair the relationship between students and the resident community in the wake of COVID. An even more pressing reason to ensure a strong return to campaigning is the climate crisis. The university's new sustainability strategy is good news, but I know from starting to push Somerville to align with its targets, it might not be that simple. As a charity rep, I learned that whilst colleges are often willing to sign up to these targets in principle, pushing for meaningful action and accountability can be more difficult. I pledge to support common rooms in this time, furthering work by campaigning like Decarbonise Oxford by providing resources and advice as well as bringing college reps together to learn from each other's successes and strategies. I'll represent this campaign to the co Conference of Colleges. Finally, I'm also really passionate about working together to address homelessness. Students are already doing so much but I want to help take this further by lobbying the university to come up with an action plan which commits to taking more responsibility for this issue. Students campaigns have shown how successful working with local action groups can be and the university needs to follow their example. I aim to build this relationship with the council on this issue. Perfect, thank you very much. Sorry, there's the timer going off there. Um, thank you very much. Moving on to the last candidate of the evening, but by no means the least, uh, Murta. Great, quick sound test. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, thank you. Hey guys, my name is Myrta. I'm she, her pronouns. I'm half Dutch, half English, and I study a master's in public policy. Why do I want to be your rep? I think there's two main uh, questions that motivated me to apply, or two main things. So the first one, uh, I think I've only been here a short time, but I think what e echoing at what everyone else has said, this is an extremely special community. A lot of people are here because they want to make a difference. They want to make an impact. And I think what I can do is to kind of enhance that impact and bring you in contact with the right people and bring people together to make 
that happen. Secondly, we've gone through an incredible crisis this year. It's a national crisis, a health crisis, but also a student crisis. So if you're watching this, if you made it this far, um, you're probably watching it from your childhood bedroom in your parents' house instead of in your friends with college. And I think we don't know what's going to happen next year, but I think there is hopefully going to be this kind of massive potential to rebuild our communities and to, to have more impact. And that's what I want to do. So my manifesto is based on three points. I won't go through all of it now, but the first one is to have more impact specifically on climate change as the kind of defining issue and to kind of strengthen what student communities are already doing to make education on climate change part of the curriculum and to evolve students in kind of the institutional ways to make change. Secondly, to support everyone, because I think what this crisis has also shown is that mental health issues are real and they're nothing to be, there's something that can we can use to kind of strengthen each other uh, if we uh, have good support. So I think it has to be easier and it has to be faster. Thirdly, we can have a stronger community by uh, supporting societies with more money, more resources and organising events uh, if there's I'm really sorry, Myrta, but that is your time up. I did promise to be very strict and it is only fair. Thank you very much to the candidates for their opening speeches. We are now going to move on to questions. As a quick reminder of how this is going to work, we've got two general questions which have been submitted by students. Each candidate will have one minute and it will be in alphabetical order. And we then we'll move on to targeted questions, which my devious little mind has thought up instead of doing my essay this morning. OK, so the first question is, does the university's sustainability strategy go far enough? And the first person that we will be hearing from on this question will be Alina. So Alina, whenever you're ready. Um, well, I think that you can never go far enough when it comes to sort of sustainability issues, because it is a relatively new thing that is sort of only just beginning to, well, it's not relatively new, but in terms of like institutional changes, it is a relatively new thing. And the fact that COVID has sort of interrupted the university policy, it means that it isn't going far enough for me personally. I know that they did the consultation back in December and they think, it, I can't remember the exact number, but I want to say maybe 900, but that might be completely wrong of how many students like actually filled it in, but compared to how many students across the uni, like you, they could be so much more. I think the things that the university is doing, promising the divestment and the net carbon, uh, zero net carbon gain by 2035 is a really good starting point, but I believe that college, the university needs to, mandate colleges and push like changes consistently across the university in order to make it happen so i think that they are it's a good starting point but they definitely can go a lot further perfect thank you very much moving on to freya uh yeah i agree with alina that it's a great starting point but i think we need to recognize that oxford as an institution the sustainability consultation uh, tended to focus on the kind of physical infrastructure of the place um, and Oxford as an institution is so much bigger and so much greater and we have so much power in kind of like the brand of Oxford that we can utilise. Um, so just kind of fixing some solar panels onto offices or net carbon by 2030 isn't enough because Oxford has massive historical emissions that we also need to acknowledge and start to tackle. And that for me is a true net zero target is to tackle historic emissions as well. There's also the problem of kind of like getting colleges on board with this. Colleges in kind of the, from the emissions that academics have from conferences um, and other third tier emissions, there needs to be far more dialogue between the colleges um, to group together to really support this issue, which I've seen firsthand as an environment representative. Perfect. Thank you so much, Freya. Uh, next up is Glyn. Hi. Um, so I think that as with many things in Oxford, a big stumbling block for sustainability policy is the collegiate nature of the university. Um, it doesn't go far into what colleges can or should be doing. And I think that this is in the coming years, something that we should be focusing on um, is supporting JCR reps to approach their colleges and work with them um, and provide best practices and figure out how they can do better. Um, I think that as well, it's always going to be a problem with Oxford um, that we've never really taken far enough because it's so much pushing and shoving. <laughs> um, and I think that this is something that the SU has done in the past well with, again, Repcom and um, getting this mandate straight from the students. Um, and like Alina said, with a consultation, 900 people is, if, if that's the number, um, is a lot, but it's probably not enough. Um, there needs to be further development. 
Perfect. Thank you very much. Moving on swiftly to Mia. Um, I think the, the new sustainability strategy um, strikes a good balance between being realistic and ambitious, although it's maybe not as ambitious as we would like in terms of a time frame. Um, it's really going to depend on colleges signing up to this new strategy. And when colleges feel that um, they have a target that is reachable, um, I think they're much more likely to sign up. Um, I also think that having um, a more realistic target target helps students um, approach their colleges with um, strategies that don't seem impossible and thus are taken up enthusiastically and then hopefully you know all of that action will mean that some targets do get reached before 2035 and I know that the action points the conference of colleges are coming up with at the moment and um, as soon as colleges start to implement them we will see some change straight away. Perfect. And Murta? Great, thanks. Um, yeah, I think the first thing to say is the strategy is obviously a, a victory for everyone who's campaigned for this for the last, you know, X amount of years. And I think that's something that you could really stick under your belt. Like we did this, like students did this. Um, in terms of does it go far enough? I think that I think I agree with people that there's kind of a, a too heavy focus on kind of estates and, and and kind of these kind of impacts of Oxford and not enough on what the what a university is about. So university is about research, it's about education. How can we, you know, fully integrate climate justice and and decarbonization into those things? Because those are really the main products of our university. Like how can we leverage the impact of Oxford uh, to really make a, like a global difference in, in, in the climate crisis? And I've highlighted a few points I think that we can do or that I would work with student groups to make happen, including putting climate change in the curriculum or, or making it part of college induction. Um, Very sorry, Murta, that was your minute up. And we will now move on to the second general question that has been submitted by students. And this is what should the university do to encourage student volunteering? And up first once more is Alina. OK, so I, I think that having worked for part of RAG for nearly three years now, I've recognised that this is quite a big issue in that there seems to be a bit of a disconnect between students sort of doing things within their college and like within like their own. Like I know, for example, my college has a charity, whereas um, and like every college might have that and you've got your reps, but then the central sort of things like RAG and the other fundraising groups aren't as connected so I think a key thing that the university could do to increase sort of student fundraising is to sort of incorporate it into Freshers Week. I know that every society and every fundraising group kind of pitches itself but I think just making it like even having concrete facts about how the littlest thing will make this difference like donate this and a child will get this to like a book can be like donated things like that that can make uh, such a that can really provide the difference between actually motivating students to get involved rather than it sort of being an abstract concept because I think charity work sometimes does kind of feel like you don't quite know what it's for. Perfect thank you very much moving on to Freya. Um, in my experience of working with student led charities and Oxford community led charities, I think that there are two main setbacks. I think that the first one is that breaching that first town gown divide. Um, students really need that first kind of contact that they have with the charity to be another student. Um, and I think that kind of a decentralized approach to a collegiate led initiatives um, from the student union would be really beneficial. So things like college reps um, and people who are involved in the charities reaching out to other people in their colleges um, to tell them that they've experienced this charity um, is a really kind of good starting point. Um, and the second point being time pressure. So Oxford Student Union currently have a really good initiative going with local mutual aid groups, but a lot of these shifts are a day long. And in my opinion, a lot of students don't have that amount of time. So I think that's something we need to focus on. Perfect. Thank you very much, Freya. Moving on swiftly to Glyn. Hi. Um, so I think that, again, just getting colleges to allow students to engage is a big thing. Um, I think that a lot of the time, because there's such an academic pressure in Oxford, um, the consideration for any kind of extracurricular, let alone volunteering, is kind of sidelined. Um, I think that 
by colleges making an active effort to Rio Freshers Week, VJCRs, and also I think college bodies themselves promoting volunteering opportunities could first of all um, make them more accessible to people to realise that they're available to do and also just promote that culture of volunteering um, and also just let students know that they're allowed to do something else except go to the library. Um, I also think that one thing that might be more ambitious um, but I think would that comes as part of other accessibility things is making sure that students have more opportunities to stay over the vacations because that provides more opportunities to do other things outside of academic life such as volunteering. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mia. Um, so I think firstly we need to work on making it more accessible by offering um, taster sessions and one-off um, volunteering sessions that sort of spark interest and get people involved. I think this will be particularly important next year because people might have missed out on those sort of introductory things this year, especially for the first years. Um, we need to make volunteering more inclusive and um, we need to make it more at least in the way it's represented, it needs to be more diverse so that working class students and students of all different backgrounds feel comfortable going to and students that are shy feel comfortable going to these sessions. And also we need to celebrate the work that um, the volunteering work that students are doing um, as much as academic achievements. And I think the SU Charities Awards are a really good way to do that. Perfect. Thank you very much. And Mata. Thank you. Uh, I'll keep it short this time. <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously I don't have the kind of benefit of added experience uh, within this uh, ecosystem that all of you or the rest of the candidates have. Um, so I think what I would do if, when, if I was elected was to make a very comprehensive uh, kind of research project, I guess, to see like where are the barriers, right? So we've had some barriers already mentioned, it's too long, all this stuff, and other kind of specific college level barriers that can be overcome uh, easily, et cetera. Um, and I think also developing the student union platform that's already there to make sure that people start using that, make it more accessible, make it easy on the website uh, and making that kind of localized as well. Like, can you volunteer around the corner from your college, for example? I think that could make a difference. Thank you. Perfect. Well, that is the general questions that were submitted by students over and now it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Um, and that is the targeted questions that are very carefully crafted and we will actually we are going I am going to do is I am going to reverse the order in which I ask the questions to make it a little bit fairer and give um, <laughs> Alina a little bit of a break because she's been uh, answering questions first. So I'm afraid, Myrta, you are up again, if that's OK with you. Um, so my question is, and it touches a little bit actually on what you just said in your answer then, is that your manifesto comments that you joined Oxford in a pandemic, you're a new student. How will you commit to returning to student life before the pandemic? And how will you look to take student feedback on what that should look like and what it did look like, given that you weren't here before? Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. I'm so glad you asked that because um, I've been thinking about this and I think there are two things to this. Uh, I think it's about who you are and kind of also my experience that I think will help with this. So I've said why I'm passionate about doing it, about doing this position. And I think that that's what drives me to apply. But the way in which I will run it, this position is really about like listening. I think there's there's this real potential and I can feel it. I know I haven't experienced it fully, but there's this real potential in, in student groups and all these societies and activities that are going on. And I think I'm someone who's very open to listening and to making things happen and getting things done. I think I've worked in an NGO before. I've worked in kind of bringing different groups together, campaigning, climate campaigning to governments. Um, and I want to kind of bring that experience to to unleash really what students are already doing to make it more impactful and to make uh, to make it feel more like home. Perfect. Thank you very much for your answer there. Um, Mia, I'm afraid it's your turn now. Um, so returning to a vibrant student life is, of course, at the top of most students priority list currently. But what changes would you like to see once once the pandemic is over and how will you support students to get back into volunteering and community work and how will you encourage them to engage in charitable activities if it is not possible to return to in person social action immediately? OK, so um, firstly, 
Um, for me, a vibrant charity and community life means that as many people as possible feel able to um, join in and that results in us all being able to push for change and um, help our local community. And um, I think that this is possible if we can't get back to how, you know, if we can't get back to totally in-person um, activities. Um, my work with RAG last year did have, and as um, charities rep and and work experience with a charity over the summer has taught me ways we can adapt um, and I'm determined to do that if that's um, what's necessary. There are ways we can do events remotely and we need to think creatively. Um, I also think that it's important as we return that we do so safely and that we make sure that um, we think about why students and the community might find in-person things but um, a bit more uncomfortable um, next year so we might have to go slowly and carefully. Okay thank you very much for your answer Mia. Um, Glenn it is your turn you ready for this? <laughs> okay uh, so you mentioned that the SU is in a unique position to support student societies and want to develop more resources to aid societies in their COVID-19 recovery. What resources do you think societies need and how will you ensure that these resources are relevant across a very broad range of societies? Um, so what comes with this is two general points about how um, societies operate in Oxford. First of all, they're not attached to colleges, which means that if they, even if they host an event within a college, um, then they don't necessarily have support from college to do that and from the college to run that event and to deal with anything that comes out of it. I think the resources we need to develop are, um, first of all, on making sure that um, societies know how they can operate within Oxford. Um, so this means just getting a good database of what the room booking availabilities are and what the COVID restrictions will be in colleges. I also think that there's particular issues when it comes to um, dealing with administration, which um, the club's office is very unclear about and also very slow about. So I think getting a bank of information about how to set up a society and how to deal with the club's office and also just um, open up to offer support as a point of contact for dealing with clubs, um, for dealing with the club's office. Um, and I think that generally speaking, these are quite large points. They are something that can help larger societies which deal with more serious issues and also with smaller societies which are getting set up and which are looking for this information um, to help make their um, events as successful as possible. Perfect, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, Freya, in your manifesto, you promised to decolonise the curriculum and also to put climate justice on the curriculum. These are quite broad commitments. Could you provide more detail about your plans, specifically about how climate justice might be taught at Oxford? Yeah, definitely. And this is part of um, the sustainability, Oxford sustainability report, um, the climate needs to be on the curriculum. So students are very much asking for this. And I think that climate justice and colonialism are just kind of intrinsically interlinked um, and there are so many student groups who are already asking for this um, common ground also climate justice campaign everybody kind of recognizes that we need to give this final push um, and I think one of the key ways that we need to do this is to recognize a lot of the unpaid labor which academics are currently performing um, around these issues and kind of educating themselves and educating others. A lot of people are interested in this. A lot of um, doctoral students are really studying it. We just need to give these people a platform um, on to which they can kind of share their ideas, um, get more research grants and continue to teach it. Thank you very much. And the final targeted question, Alina, I know you've been waiting so patiently for this. <laughs> um, one key commitment that you make is to make the process of applying for VAC residents easier and more transparent. What do you think this will look like in practice and how will you enco encourage colleges who already have VAC residents schemes to sign up for this new one? So um, my idea behind this was like it comes from a per sort of personal experience that like I've needed back accommodation for various reasons and I found the process so confusing and I didn't even know it existed until I needed it which is crazy so what I'd like to do is sort of create like a central system maybe on like on the SU website where all the colleges clearly state what what their procedure is for applying for accommodation what like their capacity is what sort of criteria they will allow students to come back because different uh, colleges have different sort of criteria and having this all laid out on the SU not only is helpful for current students but is helpful for students applying because it just provides a transparent like, sort of policy for each college of like what whether students like can make an informed decision about which colleges they'd rather apply to and um, I think that having an easy accessible form having guidance having welfare support links to welfare resources links to financial aid all will help with this sort of process. Perfect. 
Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of the targeted questions and the end of this HUST. Thank you very much to all the candidates for taking part and of course for running. It's a big role to want to be taking on and we should all be grateful for the people who stand up and are willing to do it. Um, for the people who have watched this far, well done. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> um, voting opens 8 a.m. on the 9th of February and closes on at 6 on the 11th. All positions can be voted for. Please make sure you do vote. It is really important that you make your voice heard within the student union. Thank you for watching. <laughs>